All right. Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing on YouTube or your favorite podcasting app. This will help me reach a wider audience and educate more people on Bitcoin together with my guests. And in this episode, I'm joined by Philip, aka Hugo Kana. He's a Bosnian-born entrepreneur who immigrated to Canada as a war refugee. He studied political science, speaks four languages, founded several businesses, and served as a political advisor for a Canadian member of parliament for the past 11 years. Since May 2024, Philip has been working with the maximalist team at Boo Bitcoin, a Canadian Bitcoin company. Welcome to Bitcoin for Millennials, Philip. I thank you. Thank you, Bram, for having me. I'm, uh, I was very eager, eager to talk to you today. So uh, I've been following your work. You've had some amazing guests, amazing ideas. And uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm a big fan. So I'm, uh, I feel very humbled to be here. Well, today. I'm humbled that you're here too. I love talking to fellow Bitcoiners. And, you know, although it's fun and it, and it helps me, you know, reach more people when I have people on that already have a, a big audience and are known, uh, I actually prefer, you know, just talking to other random people like myself that found Bitcoin and and discovered, you know, uh, discovered it and adopted it and see that it improves their lives, right? So I'm I'm really e eager to hear your story too. And I I wanted to start with a very personal question to learn something from you that's hard for me to imagine. And I wanted to ask you, what is it like to flee your home country because of a war? Well, listen, I, I arrived at Canada uh, when I was 10 years old as a war uh, refugee. So I literally grew up in the hell of war. So how is it? It's like a movie almost, like a movie you see. Like today I see it back and I'm like, oh my God, this can't be possible. So I was this kid, you know, in the former Yugoslavia and the civil war uh, started in, in Bosnia uh, in 92. So... Like you're playing outside as a king, a kid, imagine an eight, eight-year-old kid, you're playing outside, you know, and then you, you hear these alarms like, and then grenades start popping everywhere. These are like mortars that are being shelled on the city. So the authorities, when they see the explosion start, they signal the alarm and everybody's running like uh, to hide themselves. So I was wounded in both legs as a child. Uh, there's a, a mortar that exploded next to me. Uh, sadly, it uh, wounded my father as well, but in the head, so he passed away. Uh, so it was uh, like it was like a fucking hellish movie, you know that that you live. There's no food. Uh, uh, there's nothing in the city. Like people are cutting uh, trees to heat themselves because there's no electricity. There's no running water. There's no, uh, there's no food, obviously. And like, there's this fucking fear. Everybody's fe uh, fearing everybody because during the war, you know, there's not really a police. Uh, it's like a military state of things. So everybody with a gun can be some kind of a looter or rapist or God knows what. So it's war. I'm the biggest anti-war person you can talk to because I I've been directly the hell of war. I've grew, grown out of it. You know, it made me strong as a diamond. Because in the war also, you can see the beautiful and you can see the terrible. You know, they're both are there. The paradise and hell are there. And me, I chose obviously love and I chose to get out of it alive and to survive. So I, I grinded. I went to the Jehovah Witnesses the, to ask for food. I was saying to the Catholics, I was Catholic for food. To the Orthodox, I'm Orthodox for food. You know, selling uh, cigarettes by unit you know the the grind because what the people need to understand is even if there's a war in the country you have to live you have to earn your living and so now the economy is shit you can't you don't get any money because it's hyperinflation like as a kid i saw people throw money on the ground in front of the banks because it was now worthless the dinners the former dinners so i was uh, from a quite uh, wealthy family and after everything was spoiled because during the wars, like everything that you put aside, nothing, there's no rules anymore. Society goes into absolute chaos and until order is restored, well, it's uh, pretty chaotic. So imagine through the eyes of, the, of a child. So after that, man, it was like a crazy parable. I give conferences and sometimes I talk like four hours about it. Uh, but it was a crazy parable from Zenitsa to Zepche 
from Jepche to Teslich, from Teslich to Be Belgrade, and from Belgrade to uh, Canada. And these territories in Bosnia during the Civil War were held by different factions. So we also had to lie about our names. And I, I mean, it's, it's quite a crazy story of how we got out. But uh, it's uh, like I tell you now, I, I think about it. And I'm like, man, this, uh, this, this is a movie. You know, it's some crazy shit. And I know that people are living the same thing today. Right now in Gaza and in other places, there are people getting bombed and they're fleeing and that are in this chaos. So as civilized humans, we should always say no to war. And we should always strive to resolve any political discord we have through talks. And if it's not enough, let's all organize wrestling matches, you know, like the, the Greeks used to. I can't hear you, Bram. That's a rookie mistake. I was muted. No problem. You would, I said you would probably end with the same result. Right, like the yeah, yeah, like and, just train warriors, train strong warriors, you know, have a culture of that. Let's film them, let's buy tickets, like the UFC, you know. But mm. like to bomb random civilians, like somebody sitting in his house eating hummus, and you have a million dollar explosive engine that kills everybody, and there's pieces of people, like what the fuck is this shit, you know? Doesn't yeah. make any sense. Who asked for that? Who wants that? Who says I'm fine with that? Well, the people who are agree with that, the, I mean, they're going to fucking hell because it is hell. That's what they're creating. So, I like I, I survived it and I I managed to stay, uh, you know, sane through it all. But uh, I've seen some fucking weird shit, man. And I've seen the beautiful and I've seen the ugly. So I know that the the human beings are capable of both. And the beautiful during the time of war, where you need to think about yourself and your immediate needs, yet you choose to help others. Well, that's really beautiful. You know, that's uh, that's the strong people. Yeah. What's your biggest lesson, if you look back? Choose love. Choose love. Always look. There's love hidden everywhere. You know, in every decision that you have to do. Sometimes it's a hard decision. Sometimes it's a decision that co goes against even your rationale, but choose love. Thank you. Does your Bitcoin custody setup keep you up at night? Gain peace of mind with OnRamp and their multi-institution custody solution. OnRamp creates a dedicated multi-signature vault for you and three separate institutions each hold a key, which are OnRamp, Bitco, and CoinCover. But none of them can move funds unilaterally, only you have control. These institutions can only sign with your instruction. OnRamp's multi-institution custody eliminates single points of failure, reduces your personal attack service and technical burden, and provides access to financial services that allow you to secure your Bitcoin, including inheritance planning, insurance-backed warranties for all balances and transactions, low-cost trading, and more. Check out onrampbitcoin.com through my link in the description below and receive $250 in Bitcoin when you join. If you want to self-custody your Bitcoin stack, I recommend the Foundation Passport, a premium Bitcoin-only hardware wallet. I've been using mine for about a year now, and I love the design and ease of use. And with Foundation's mobile wallet companion app Envoy, your initial onboarding is super smooth and straightforward. The Passport is fully air-gapped, which means you never have to connect it to the internet or any computer. The Passport serves as a signing device to sign transactions on your Envoy app, or any of your other favorite software wallets like Sparrow or Blue Wallet. The Foundation Passport also offers encrypted backups on a micro SD card and is built with 100% open source hardware and software. I love what Zach and the team at Foundation are building and to learn more about their mission, please check out episode 27 of this podcast. If you consider buying a Foundation Passport, you can use code BRAM, that's B-R-A-M, to get $10 off at foundation.xyz slash BRAM. Oh yeah, you, you, so you went on this journey to get out. Yeah, I think uh, you know in Bitcoin there's a lot of examples, you know, of uh, the the usability of of Bitcoin, right, as taking your wealth with you. How was it when you fled a country? Did you take your possessions or some sort of the wealth you had or nothing? Like how 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 did that work? 
zilch nothing because how it works is like this before you leave you try to sell out everything that you have in your position to have some at hand money so obviously everything you're selling you're getting dimes on the dollar because it's war and nobody's interested in acquiring stuff you know but some people are and some people are still acquiring and some people get very rich during war times because they literally go there and they buy out anything that they can of value and they resell it in other places and they do like black market stuff. So you sell everything you have and then with the money you have at your hand, that is everything you, you held, you go and you bribe people to let you pass there, you bribe this one, you pay that, you have to live, you have to feed yourself. And it's a journey full of uh, obstacles, people that obviously want to kill you, uh, bombs that explode around you, rumors, uh, you have like uh, the lack of food, obviously the lack of shelter. So it's like just a hellish journey and you go step by step, you know, and you, 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 you need to get to a point where the embassy finally calls you and tells you, uh, you know, we're going to loan you some money uh, to buy a, a plane tickets and you're going to go here and then you're going to pay us slowly back everything that we gave you and you're going to be a temporary resident. So I landed in Quebec City here, in beautiful Canada, Quebec City, uh, 10 years of age. And uh, that's where everything started without a, a dime in our pockets, you know, so, yeah. And so from when you got to Canada to now, obviously back then it was a way better place for you to end up at. How have you seen Canada change? I think from my perspective like from the yeah. from the outside I have both perspectives that's what's beautiful i yeah. have your perspective too because i've grown in a western country i i'm a westerner now you know i live in a western country and like you i've seen the changes you know and so for me it has been uh let's say very um i'm uh i'm kind of sad you know to see our countries uh, change like this and make these kind of uh, stupid decisions because it's like we have it all and we we almost like uh don't value what we have and we don't preserve it in a in a good way so we see that these standards of living dropping at a, an alarming rate like in canada in the last three years everybody got poorer 25 percent. everybody because inflation what is inflation it's a tax on everything and it's a tax that means that they print more money that competes for the same uh, you know, services and uh, and uh, commodities that are in a, in a market. So the prices, they go up. And so if you haven't got a raise of 25% in the last three years, and I'm being generous, it might be more, like you're getting poor. So I'm, I feel you. And I think that, uh, you know, the first step of making a correction to something that's going this bad is to realize what's going on. And I'm really happy to see guys like you and other millennials and older people and younger ones talking about, you know, uh, like the, the economic situation, and how everything can continue like that. Like Canada is a, it's, it's a very hard country to live in right now. And when you go to the expat communities of, uh, you know, Indians and other uh, immigrants that go into Ontario, like they're recommending to Indians, don't come here. Life is harder here than in India. Like I see that as a Canadian and I'm kind of sad that the shit has gone this badly, you know? So Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. That that's really wild, right? Like the fact that that the people who came from a country <laughs> are telling to their fellow countrymen and women, yeah. please don't come here. Yeah. That, but just I, to yeah. I Go just ahead. wanna add something. Even you know, now Canada has basically created a system of temporary workers which are basically new, uh, it's a new slave system, okay? Mm. You bring people over, you pay them the bare minimum, you know, you pay them the minimum salary in, allowed in the country, and they work on fields, you know, and in other sections of the economy, like uh, the, fab, uh, the, the factory, stuff like that. But these people, they can't even live with the money they, they gain by working, you know? So most of these people, they, they want to send the back their money to their families for from the poorer countries where they come to work temporary. So they send the money back. So here they live like in a, a full of apartments. They're like seven living in an apartment and in really poor conditions, you know? So like what 
what are we doing? What what yeah. is this economy? You know, we can't continue like that. Things are gonna get worse than worse, and the average people are the ones paying the price. And the COVID times was the biggest wealth transfer from the popular classes to the super wealthy that ever occurred since we are keeping record. So this is basically we're getting pillaged in our Western societies. That's how I see it. I see it like we're getting pillaged and we're too nice to say something about it. And now with people like you talking about it, I feel that that's truly the first step of uh, the upcoming change. Yeah. I want to get into your uh, your journey in, in, in the parliament because you were there when, when yeah. all of this changed. But just one side question before, just to verify, like sometimes you see on Twitter, you know, like people in a Canadian supermarket and they're like, the steak is a hundred bucks in the supermarket or 200. Yeah. Is this, is that true? Well, yeah, it's true. Uh, it's true, but it varies in Canada. Canada is a big country. So there's uh, uh, parts of Canada where it's way more expensive. Toronto being one of the most expensive part, uh, you know, Vancouver. I live mm -hmm. in Quebec City, which is a smaller city. So there are still these reasonable prices here, but we're feeling the pinch even here. So yes, it's true, but it varies. There are some places where it's not, and others where it is. Like, but like the food has gone up. Uh, the the meat, maybe steak, has gone up maybe fifty percent in the two last years. So two years, less yeah. two. Yeah. So fifty wow. percent. Imagine you're running a restaurant. I had a restaurant. I opened many restaurants in the past life. You know. So uh, a restaurant, you base your profitability on you know the the food that you buy. You you make it you sell it but now if the chicken if the meat if the veggies if everything grows by 50 40 30 20 percent like and your profit is 15 percent the average profit for a restaurant is 15 percent year so like that means that they're all insolvent right now yeah and so it has created this money printing that they have done and this this crime and pillaging that they have done has caused the economy right now to be totally debalanced. And we have zombie companies walking around that are never again going to be able to catch up to the losses that they have uh, uh, had. And that are just, you know, being, some of them are going continuously back to the state begging for money. Like, please give us $2 million. We have this new project. It's super wow. And the states keep just running checks. And it keeps printing more money. Because that's the thing. Now, if the economy is in balance and you raise one guy, well, the guy under him is going to say, wait a minute, I want to get raised too. Then you have to raise him too. Then everything goes to shit because there's not enough money, right? Because you, it's an exponential. So that's why Bitcoin is super important. How I see Bitcoin is Bitcoin is the great emancipator. Bitcoin is the giver of freedom because it gives you basically your time back. And many of us have been lured into Bitcoin by greed. You know, we come there, we want to make money, we want to be investors, we, and it's okay. But once you understand truly Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you understand that it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's a slow, you know, the impoverishment of your, uh, the, the fruits of your labor. Let's stop getting, you know, uh, stole. Because if you put your money, if you store it in Bitcoin, as you know, well, then your money works for you and it's protected from these uh, inflationary pressures that are going to get worse and worse. And, you know, when you see the mainstream media telling us, they always have these stories like inflation has moved back a point. You know, it's always like they're they're moving a point up, a point to a uh, But it's all fake numbers. They're lying to the, the to the population. Uh, like the guy, I don't know if you saw on X, that guy that had the Walmart, you know, receipt from. Yeah, 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 ago. that was wild. $145 costs 400 and some dollars today. Like, yeah. this is not 4% inflation. They're lying. Well, yeah, last month <laughs> inflation yeah, was 4%, exactly. right? Exactly. But they, they forget to say it's compounding also. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, they and, make and, it seem as if it was yearly, you know? Yes, I agree. But this is, um, this, of course, the entire point, right? Like, uh, what. what <laughs> What I also like is it's less about inflation, but I think the American Civil War, the resistance, uh, uh, also partially came from like this uh, 
um, this tax on assets or something, you know, the in- income tax or something. Yeah, two, 2%. two percent. Two percent. Like a, they had like a war. You yeah, know? and, and now, oh, no, no. now it's yeah. over fifty, and everyone's like, yeah, but we have to contribute to, you know, uh, six hundred meters of highway that costs, uh, you know, ten billion or what was yeah. it in America? You know, like it's, but it's it's pe- people are not thinking right. Like I I think, and we said this many times on on here, like. You should not believe what we are saying. You have to verify for yourself, exactly. right? You have to start thinking exactly. for for yourself. Like exactly. that is, I think, what we are trying to invite people uh, to in, eventually. Um, but but it feels like no one, well, not a lot of people are are thinking for themselves, right? Like if you, if you see a clip like that guy, you know, with the Walmart receipt. I was actually looking for online uh, grocery. Um, orders uh i didn't find any yet but i wanted to do the same thing because i wanted to see like what what is it here like what is it effectively right because if you look at headline uh inflation you know they say two percent three four you know whatever but stuff's really expensive but i how i see it now as a student of history as a humble student of history and like i'm the guy that watches all of the battles all of the you know wars and everything that's going on like i love that uh I see it now this way. There's always two wars that a state is waging. An outside war, and in time of peace, an inside war where factions wage war against the public. Okay, So see it this way. These are like cliques of individuals that acquire certain position of power, something, some of the levers of powers in a certain society, and then they siphon the money to themselves or to their personal project and sometimes it can be beneficial to the public and sometimes it's disastrous to the public. So now we have these globalist students that come from the same school, you know, that are sent there with the same ideas that, are, that have been completely brainwashed in this apocalyptic cult of the world is coming to an end if we don't do this or that, you know. And they've been groomed to positions of power where their actions now are just a reflex. They don't question it anymore. They receive this note from McKinsey that all of the Western leaders receive. They're going to read the note and say, okay, we need to do this. And yeah, then exactly. they're going to justify themselves and uh, to the, their population also by saying, oh, yeah, we're doing it. But look, England is doing it too. And England is going to say, listen, we're doing it too. But look, Canada is doing it too, you know. But it's the same fucking people. You know, it's the same people. It's the same click running things. And right now, I'm starting to think that this click might not have our best interest at heart, you know? So that's what COVID woke up to many people and other shit fuckeries before that. And there's many more shit fuckeries to come that are going to wake up even more people. And I think that uh, someday we're going to come to a tipping point where the society are just going to say, no, we refuse this anymore. And we're going to establish a new set of rules and or going to go back to certain rules that are not respected because there's many laws right now that are being broken. Like in Canada during the COVID, they broke laws. They broke our laws uh, for political gains and for like ideological gains, you know, and we were against that. My MP was one of the only MPs to step up during COVID, an MP from a governing party to say, hey, guys, let's take a fucking minute here and let's see what we're doing. Like, this is, these are Canadians, okay? Because we were getting pushed this narrative of these guys are extremists and these are that or this. Like, a society can never treat its citizen this way. A citizen is a member of that society and everybody is like a child to the society, you know? And after, let's leave everybody have their own private property and their individual uh, uh, freedoms. But as a society, as a collective, let's make sure that, you know, we don't do like what they did to these people. Like treat Mm. them as Nazis, confiscate their bank accounts. On which rights? Who gave them this power? You know, he's just a prime minister. He's not a king. He's not a, we're, we're not in a feudal system. We're fucking free citizens. And every country needs to remember that. In, if you're a, a freedom-loving, a God-loving, freedom-loving man in any Western society, you need to always think through that lens. Not what they're saying, what's the cool thing right now, but, you know, what's the just thing? What's the fair thing? What's the love in all of that, you know? And that's why I always tell you, you need to find that love because there's some things even I'm not, I don't agree with. There's many things I don't agree with. But I'll find, you know, my way of 
accepting it or seeing it through love and finding a way, you know, as every human being should. Because anyway, in a hundred years, we'll all be dead, you know. So what the fuck are we even doing here? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, so... But you were there. You 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 walked around in the Canadian Parliament, right? Yeah. If there's any any takeaways from, you know, working in an environment like that and seeing certain policies uh, being enacted, etc. Just like, what is your takeaway? Maybe that's the shortest question. What? How do you look back on that part of your career? Well, listen. Uh... How I look at it, I look at it as somebody that was, uh, I, I was heartbroken by many decisions that were taken because, you know, there's a lot of people shitting on the liberal, liberal liberals on, uh, on X, but what they mean is the woke liberal stuff that we see sometimes. But a liberal means what is freedom of religion, freedom of commerce. So you're a capitalist and individual rights. That's what liberal meant for me. I joined the Liberal Party back then when it was Jean Chrétien in 2007. So seeing these woke ideologies jump in, you know, and try to do these kind of a, it's very similar to the how the communist, uh, you know, brainwash, like these kinds of uh, intense guilt brainwashing uh, going on. And it's very subtle also. It's not like, uh, it's not like uh, you must do this or that. It's like, no, oh, everything's cool. Everything's cool. I just woke up one day and like everybody was uh, writing in their emails like uh, their pronouns. And I was like, what the fuck is this? At first, I thought it was a joke, you know. So I wrote to somebody. I said, what the, look at this, you know. And she said, no, no, this is the new thing now. So it starts like this suddenly. Mm. So during the COVID, when they decided to enact these measures that they said during the election that they wouldn't, okay, they said they wouldn't. So they lied. They went against their word. The same way the Zelensky proposed, said that he was going to do peace and after chose war. Well, they lied to the public about the COVID and then enacted all kinds of retarded regulations. So me being inside, how I saw it is like this. First of all, my MP, which is a friend of mine since high school. I know he watches your show also sometimes. He's a millennial, a great guy, well-educated guy. And I know he was on the right side of history on the most important votes and most important things. So. For that, I was okay. And second, well, I was trying to do the best things I can in my position as a political advisor to help uh, businesses, communities, uh, people that are stuck with all kinds of, uh, you know, bureaucratic nonsenses. So, uh, like, I, I love that in my job. And I was, uh, at the end, working also at the Committee of Industry and Technology of Canada. So we recommended some great things on Bitcoin, uh, self-custody, stuff like that. Uh, we studied quantum, we studied AI. So you, you get all of these CEOs and experts that come to committee uh, to testify. It's like an official organ of the Canadian Parliament. And also before that, I worked as an assistant uh, to the, he was the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Health at that time. So on the weed legalization and like, I, I love that also. So listen, even I was always trying to balance, you know, the good stuff from the bad stuff. But what really was the red line for me was the genocide in Gaza. When they were trying to say everything is cool while we were still sending weapons to Israel at that time, I was like, no, I like I lost all uh, will to play in that absurd tier. Like I, it was done for me. I knew I had to go work in Bitcoin at that point. Like for me, I was feeling that I was getting some karmic effects from that, you know, mm. because I was a director of campaign. So during the election time, I was a co-director in charge of winning an election in a specific riding. So I was literally giving that seat to the, you know, to the, to the government. So I didn't want to be part of that anymore. And I, I didn't know how, uh, what to do. And at the end, it came uh, at the end very friendly. I'm in very good terms uh, with uh, my friend that still uh, continues to work there. He's going to run for uh, another election and uh, he's going to stay there. Maybe, you know, I don't know what his plans is. But uh, I wanted to work in Bitcoin because now I knew I wanted to become an apostle for this technology, for this realignment, because the solution to everything is in the financial system. Everything's. Uh, it, the problem is in the money. 
Okay, money is the thing yes. that corrupts us. So if, if we can fix our fucking money, we're gonna fix everything. And it's not gonna be done overnight. But if we can get more and more people to enter, and more and more uh, companies, and more and more of uh, it can be nonprofits, it can be all kinds. You can be an artist. You can be you know anything because Bitcoin truly now uh, gives you the opportunity to emancipate yourself and also to start really living your life and not just surviving, you know, because we're struggling. Because this rat race, if you're in the system, like also, Graham, I've lost 20, 25% of my, uh, uh, you know, my, uh, <laughs> my, my wealth too. I was there, you know. So you can't win this rat race because yeah. it's exponential. You cannot exchange enough of your time for the amount of stealing they're willing to do. Okay, the, it's exponential. You can't work enough. Yes. You're gonna kill yourself at work. You're gonna clone yourself. You and your fucking clones are gonna work, and they're gonna still steal more because these people, it's never enough for them. They have eight houses. They fly, you know, in their jets, and they come to us and to tell us this and that, and we should and we shouldn't do that. So this is totally. Uh, we should reject these things, like, and not play along in these uh, stupid games. Yeah. I think uh, what two things like from what you said, I think for Bitcoin, Bitcoin is, is an alternative to the existing system, right? It's a parallel system. And once you understand that you can move the economic reward that you receive in a fiat system to that other system and that you actually step out of it fully, right? As you mentioned, that's, that's when you are, let's say, more safe, right? And that's why, we, you know, we started yet another Bitcoin podcast yeah. is we need more people to understand that, right? Like, because, oh, yeah. because if you are still participating in this fiat money system, you were also participating in, you know, the, 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 um, the corruption of the incentives that could be good at first, right? But because the money is broken, the incentives are broken. And I think that's what I try to tell a lot of people that, you know, identify as like progressive or liberal, you know, if they even know what that means, by the way. But anyway, mm -hmm. like I say, like, and anything you would ever want to fix in the world, anything that's broken that you want to fix in the world is broken because the incentives are broken. And why are the incentives broken? It's because the money is broken, you know, like that. It, it, it's very logical. But with a lot of people, this just doesn't fly. Like they don't but, see it. No, it's the greed. No, it's the capitalism. No, it's the billionaires. No, it's the this or the that. Yes. It's everything. And what do they have? No, but Money. it's everything. Bitcoin is yeah. not left. It's not right. It's not no. pro this or pro that. It's not against anybody and it's not for nobody. It's just, you know, it's just, it's just a, a ledger big... anchor in yes. mathematics, in physics, yes. you know. And so... that's the entire point that yeah. it sounds too good to be true and too easy to ditch this abstracted you know confluated fiat money system that we think is so important you know and and you know people even think that the money in their banking app you know is you know the number that they see is actually there like scrooge mcduck in his vault right exactly. like that like the disney yeah. image yeah. of of my money yeah. you know like it, it once you understand that it's not there it's not yours it's being devalued right like all these things and you can just move literally just move it's two steps you know one leg and then the other leg so that's kind of how but i see it you, you it's say so, it's, a, it's, it's a so easy to system. move yeah yeah I, no i'm sorry i don't but I, I don't it's want to too easy you. it's too easy too logical too obvious and therefore people doubt it that's what exactly. i think no you're totally right you know and i want to add it's how i see it it's like there's only two systems and one of the two systems is like a black hole that opened in the other system so there's this yes. small puncture you know Very good and we're one. we're here at this puncture so you're an old schooler. You think now you repeated yourself. You talked about everything. But what you don't understand is use the use an easy E of this shit, of this game, you know? People are still going to look at you and hear from your ideas 10 years from now because there's still going to be hordes and hordes of people coming in. And by then you're going to be, you know, I don't know, maybe interviewing people on the moon because the moon <laughs> tourism is going to become a we thing. You know? I don't know. We yeah. have the quantum AI stuff coming. So I don't know where we're going to go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, but that's the thing. There's only two systems. And the first one, 
which is the FIAT system, even if you choose, let's say, gold, or if you choose some other way to navigate in that FIAT system, m many people have cho chosen, uh, you know, real estate, and that's causing all of kinds of uh, fucking problems in the real estate market for the poor members of our society. Well, even that goes through the FIAT lens. The only real system, the real money, the only real money is Bitcoin. The only money you really own is Bitcoin. And like you say, I work in bull Bitcoin, as you know now. And the amount of, you know, uh, games that the banks play with their customers for them to not be able to buy Bitcoin and not like all of these sneak For their little, safety. Yeah, for their safety and all this. Little, like, I, I just want to shout out Francis Pouliot from Bull Bitcoin and the whole team. These guys, I mean, these are pure maxis. There's no shit coins there. It's the core Bitcoin mentality, you know, and it's from the get go. And they're expanding also in Europe soon. They're starting in France and it's going to be available in Europe. They've been in Prague now to talk about that. Many more to come. But I just want to shout out these people because I feel like I met my whole family. You know, you know that meme where everybody's like doing that hug. That's how I feel entering in this company. Like it's I already knew these people, even though I'm completely new and I'm learning from them a lot because these guys know the technical stuff, you know, they're, they're the, they're the Scotties, you know, they're in the engine rooms. They know how all of these things works behind, behind the scenes. So for, for a guy like me, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, I like to think and talk about Bitcoin through the lens of geopolitics of real life and stuff like that. But I'm not an engineer, you know, I don't. So to learn a lot of this new stuff and to see the beauty of Bitcoin, like Bitcoin, like you said, the first step is you don't believe it. Like me, it took me a long time before I understood, hey, bro, okay, this is it. This is what you were always looking for. I was always looking for that as a businessman before, you know. So until you get there, you can't believe it. And once you get there and you understand it, you have that epiphany, that beauty moment where you say, oh, my God, okay, this is what Bitcoin is. Well, then there's still a shit ton more to learn to see the, the profound beauty and the the games that are, you know, everything that goes inside of the Bitcoin community, which, by the way, I love and like shit posting for me now is like uh, I'm like a fish in the water. You know, I love, <laughs> love that. So how did your Bitcoin journey go? You said it took you a while to get it, but like how, how did you discover it and Listen, what did you learn along the way? My, my friend that became member of parliament, he lives, used to live in Montreal, okay? And he uh, he was studying there and they had a, this apartment there with many friends. I used to go there. We go clubbing in Montreal. I go to see them and whatever. So they've just been, uh, they re I went to see them in 2012, 2012, 2013. I can't exactly remember. And they say, we just met this guy named Commander X and uh, he showed us a thing called Bitcoin. And this thing, you can only buy like uh, Starbucks uh, cards uh, with it or, you know, subway cards at that time. That's the only thing you can buy for it. But trust me, this is the future. This is none and none. So I hear them say that and I'm like curious, you know, so I go and I type it. I see Bitcoin. And back then, it wasn't like today where you can just go on a uh, bull Bitcoin and buy Bitcoin. Like, it wasn't like that. You had to go on some shady website and to say, you, you, you had to be a geek, you know. And I'm a geek. I grew up with a PC in my hand, you know. I'm a gamer and all, but I'm not that kind of a geek, you know, that goes too deep into the, you know, the forums. And, you know, I stay on the surface. I'm a, I'm a gamer geek. Yeah. And so I tried and after I, I, I went and I saw some articles saying about money laundering, you know, all, the whole, the, the same lies that uh, they still say today about Bitcoin, you know, it's only criminals, no, no, no. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, I won't, you know. And then I went back to it. I bought some, I sold some, I bought some shit points. I, I got wrecked on, on Safe Moon. I got wrecked on uh, many other uh, altcoins, you know. And then finally, like two and a half years ago, I had the epiphany that I became a Bitcoin maximalist, basically by just keeping um, uh, studying it, keeping on studying it and keeping on listening to ideas and seeing also in reality and checking with my past uh, presumptions, how did things play out? And, you know, there's... There's also, I want to say to the public that things that it's late to come into Bitcoin. Many of the OGs got wrecked in many other, uh, you know, shitcoins afterwards or some crazy moves they did. 
So you can enter Bitcoin even in 10 years from now. You're still entering a very clean, fluid system that is just and based on truth, you know. So it doesn't matter when you enter, actually. And yeah. the amount doesn't matter either. You can enter for $10 or you can enter for $100. What matter is this? Do you understand what you are buying? And will you be able to hold what you're buying? Okay, that's what's matter. How many sats do you hold? Because the rest doesn't matter. Like volatility, it's a very volatile asset, but it's not risky. And volatility is good for the market. Volatility creates market dynamisms that are good for the holders and for the people that see, you know, the, the real value in what this is. So I've been on and off and two and a half years ago, like I'm like I'm a Bitcoin maxi. I started stacking, you know, then I lost everything in my boat accident. And so now I'm, I, I'll hopefully start uh, stacking again. <laughs> and so... <clears throat> I love that you know your story is so common i think everyone has the same right like there's so many different touch points you go up and down you discover it and then maybe you buy it and then you sell it and then you know it goes up and down can you remember what kind of like misconceptions you had about it initially and how how did they change so when like two and a half years ago you were like okay this is the thing what was the main thing that that then clicked and how was it before i I always wanted to own ultimately only Bitcoin. Okay, that was my goal from the beginning because I always thought it, it to it is in this way. This is the apex asset of them all. I need to own it. But the misconception I did is that I was always saying, let me make some money on these shit coins and then I'll store it in Bitcoin and forget about it. So I was trying to get that, you know, that shortcut. And that's the mistake. If instead I just say no to the shit fuckery from the get go in these these are scams, okay? People get wrecked. Uh, lives get ruined. This is bad karma also for you folks. There's, this has, these are unregulated companies that can print more, that, that have less even, uh, you know, responsibility than the governments. So, like, you're going to get wrecked. So, the first mistake was to accepting to going to play with the pigs in the, in the mud. You know, that's the first mistake I made. And the second mistake I made is to try to have that shortcut because, you know, and I knew it, I knew it, you know, in life, fuck the shortcuts. Everybody that takes shortcuts in life gets fucked, you know? So that's why uh, I want to go back to bull Bitcoin. They chose the hard path. They could have become another Binance shilling shit coins and you're doing all kinds of nonsense, but they're a self custodial exchange. So this not, not, not only does it make it a more solid company financially, but it's super good karma for uh, the founder and everybody there because what we're doing, we're helping people store their own value for themselves, you know, without going to these casinos. Because that's what you're doing. If you're buying altcoins, they're all shit points. There's no altcoin. It's all shit points. And you're playing in a casino. And listen, if you win in that casino, well, somebody else is losing. So you're maybe winning some money, uh, but it's... It's not good money, you know. It's money that's gonna be fleeting away because it's that bad juju money. I don't like that money. Well, it's still the 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 kind of like the fiat mentality trap, exactly. right? The zero sum game trap. Like, <laughs> I'm a really good trader. I'm gonna accumulate Bitcoin. You know? Yeah. Uh, where I I like the I like the sentence uh, stay solvent, stack sets. Right, like just keep keep doing what yeah. you're doing. Try to become yeah. better at it, you know. And eventually, you know, you try to live, you know, in in the best way possible, whatever that is for you. And whatever you have left, you save in Bitcoin, you know. And I, I, exactly. I, exactly. When <laughs> when we said like it's so simple, like it is that right, like that. Once you realize what this is the fact that it's just a thing it's just a protocol you know every 10 minutes twenty thousand computers <laughs> say the protocol still works all the thumbs up you know there's still only 21 million bitcoin all divisible by 100 million and that's it that is literally that's it it that's right it. and then people will be like but there's no cash flow there's no this that that's not the point the point is that this is the thing you know what is the intrinsic value of Bitcoin that this is the thing that it's audited every 10 minutes that the rules are not changed and they are that's checked every 10 minutes. That is what the value is because your money system, the fiat money system, 
Tell me what the rules are. How is it constructed? Who makes the decisions? When do they make the decisions? Why do they make the decisions? Right? Exactly. It's not exactly. a constant. It's not a constant. I love the word constant. I saw the word constant somewhere today. Like, uh, um, uh, and, and Nico Yuk uh, said it to me a few episodes back. You know, Bitcoin is the only constant in the economic universe. That is, that is what the value is. It's exactly. a straight line. Exactly. It's just the same thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and and also yeah. to be able to enter into this protocol and pay the same price as the trillionaires do, and the big corporation and all the big players, like you come and everybody has the same set of rules. Yes, it's the purest market, offer yes. and demand. There's no over the counter bullshit. There's no sneaky shit. You know, no fake. That's the price. There's no fake. Is it validated? Are you buying real Bitcoin? This is the price. Welcome on board. You buying for ten dollars, or you buying for a thousand? You play by yeah. the same rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think maybe to add to that, I, I, I see so many comments also on YouTube, Twitter. Like uh, people are like, yeah, but the Wall Street people are now in. It's, it's co-opted by Wall Street. This and that. No, a anyone can buy this. Anyone yeah. can buy this. Yeah. The fact that they are buying it should be your signal. Yeah. I don't like it either that the finance pros figured it out. I don't like that. You know. But they are buying. Why are they buy buying? Why are they paying attention to something that was randomly released on an internet forum 15 years ago? What? Because it's bullshit? <laughs> I don't think so. You know, yeah. so it's 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 unfortunate, but they know exactly what this is. Although, well, most exactly. of them know what no, this but is. Their, right? their business is the business of money. So these people have yeah. no money, you know? Yeah. And it also should signal to you how their trust is eroding in the other money. Absolutely. Right? But why, to, why are you adopting this new form of money, right? It says something. You know? Oh, yeah. And two things about what you say. First thing, I think now is the best time actually to go into Bitcoin. Because now, like you say, we know the institutions are buying it. So countries are buying it. Uh, and the system is past that, uh, in, my, in my humble opinion, is past the... the, the, the certain vulnerabilities that he it had at the beginning. And the second reason why now is a, is a great time to, to buy Bitcoin is because it's still fucking early. And you, you, I think that at the end, we even choose, you know, if we can get a little bit spiritual in, the, in, this, uh, in this podcast, you know, I even think you choose the timeline that you decide to come into mm. this school, in this plane of life that is a school for souls in some way. So, yes. like you say, it just happened. This is a technological revolution. Like at the beginning, everybody had the flip phones and said, oh, I love my flip phones. My Blackberry is so great. I like the couch things. And afterwards, everybody had smartphones. Why? Because it was superior technology. So Bitcoin, what is it? It's superior technology. It's superior monetary technology. So everything is going inside there. So these big wigs, they found out because they pay them nerds and they have their, their AI. And for BlackRock, their Aladdin software recommended them that they store 80, I think 82% of their net worth into Bitcoin. That was the recommendation of their supercomputer that they, they built to predict, you know, what the decisions they have to make. So even the AI understand what Bitcoin is and the power of the protocol. And yeah. we're so tiny to it. And we think uh, about Bitcoin right now in our lifetime, you know, we say, okay, in 10, four years, but. Even in five lifetimes from now, Bitcoin is still going to be there. And they're not even going to be talking about Bitcoin. They're going to be talking about sats because, you know, we're going to go so deep into these decimals. And don't also think that the concentration of wealth is going to stop. It's not. It's going to get more exponential. More wealth is going to be created as well. You know, once we're able to stop them asteroids and to mine the gold on them and stuff like that, some, you know, there's some big technology uh, things that are coming now that people are investing billions into that are going to generate trillions. So this concentration of money, the game just keeps going on. And these people are going to go in Bitcoin. Why? Because they don't want to give their money to them. No fucking banker, you know, yes, that has exactly. these nice buildings and, and nice floors, you know, and wears a beautiful, nice tie. Go fuck himself. He, he, he's not you. You want to have control and store your money in a, in a prudent way where you have your keys. Yeah. Yeah, I always say, you know, like, do you want to outsource your personal responsibilities to someone who doesn't care about you? You know, yeah, like not not in a malicious way, but like no. they have their own life. 
Exactly. So you you have exactly. to again think think for yourself, right? I, I I like what you said. You know, and people people choose when you know they open their mind and see you know this other paradigm. I was looking up this quote, but it's kind of like you know uh, you you can only yeah you it's like you can only learn when you're ready for it. I'm totally butchering Absolutely. this. <laughs> Very no, simple, no, but, but it's exactly but it's, that. it's really that. I uh, I was looking for another tweet uh, that I had. Like it's uh, here. You know, when we talked about Bitcoin is so simple, it's so clear, you know, there is value because there's a finite, uh, verifiable finite scarcity, right? So it's it's eventually, once you study more, you will see it's clearly clearly superior to any other asset. But I wrote this, like, the pace of understanding is very slow, right? I, I Even today, I had a discussion with someone on YouTube and he was like, oh, Bitcoin really has to move this year or else like the promise <laughs> or this or that is gone. And I'm like, what are you, like, Bitcoin is just the protocol thing like what are you talking about you know like the the it's clear what this is at least to me but not to enough people and yeah. you know more people should learn what this is and then he replied with something like oh this is the you know you don't understand study more argument and i said yes exactly uh, you know he didn't like it he didn't like it oh. but i was like who 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 has to do something how, how does bitcoin bitcoin quote unquote do something this year yeah. right to like, do what for who what are you talking about well, yeah exactly <laughs> you know? Yeah. and you know but it's a, i think that a lot of the bitcoiners are the way they are because uh, it's first and foremost a uh, inward road you know that we yes. all take it's a spirituality road in I think the only competition one has in his life is a competition with his old self, you know. Even the time is not really linear. So the mindset that you are in, you're going to create around you, you know. So Bitcoin is that also. Bitcoin is, you can't shove Bitcoin down the throat of, every, of anybody. And even if somebody's worth a million dollars and you just tell him, you know, just put a $5,000 in a Bitcoin, he's still not going to do it if he's not there, you know. But once you're truly there and once you truly understand the value of this protocol and this system and the beauty of it, then you're a hundred percent in, you know, then you're a yeah. maximum. Then you can't, you, like, honestly, I wouldn't own anything else. I, I'm trying to liquidate everything I have. Some things are liquid, others no, because I've had some, uh, you know, some stocks, some actions in some uh, startups and stuff like that. And like, why? For you, you have... Listen, as a businessman, I had many businesses before. You have to deal with the customers, with the government, with the, with the, you know, the, the people that sell you your, the things that you transform. You, you have to deal with all kinds of bureaucratic shit. People are sick. People come, can't come. You know, there's this, there's that. Something breaks. Like Bitcoin, you just place your money and 24 seven, you have little sats that go out day in, day out and they work hard. To raise your buying power and to put you and your family in a better position. And not only that, it's still going to work for you and your succession. You can leave it to your kids. You, they can leave it to their kids afterwards. And you can just use the essential things that you need, you know, to, uh, to stay solvent, as you say, essentially. Yeah. And to be able to buy some food and buy some roof. But other than that, Bitcoin is always going to realign you, even for what is important, you know. What stuff do you really need? Like if you have to decide between stats and buying something useless that you don't really need, you're going to say, I'm going to keep my stats. You know? I'm yeah. not going to buy this stupid shit. But yeah. if you're living on a fiat standard and you're a Wall Street banker, well, then you're going to snort some coke out of the hooker's ass and drive a VTT off a cliff. You know, you're going to do some fiat stupid retarded shit. <laughs> five thousand dollar suit i'm thinking but uh yeah no i i said this many times as well like uh, i like sneakers or just nice shoes and yeah. uh, som sometimes i see shoes and i'm like oh i want to have these shoes i don't know 250 euro yeah. shoes or something or i have like that money extra or 200 what it doesn't really matter what the amount is but then i'm like no i don't need other shoes and then i just buy bitcoin with it exactly you know like, it's just that and it's better it's it, because eventually you know and people will be like oh but but you cannot walk in your bitcoin right <laughs> or uh, yeah, um, but what, what what i think the point here to make is instead of 
giving in to this forced consumerism that you don't actually really want, right? Like who wants 20 pairs of shoes? Like, do you actually need that, right? I've, it just, that's your point, right? Just yeah. asking yourself that question. Just asking do yourself, I need... do I really need it? You know, and sometimes we don't take the time to, you know, just take that little pause, just take that little pause and just zoom out for a little, just yeah. step back, observe your life yeah. like it was a, on the screen, you know, just for a second. And look at all of these, you know, the, the things going on and then make a decision, go yeah. back in. Yeah, because eventually I think, and that is what Bitcoin enables us to do, at least this is how I see it. Yes, I cannot walk in my Bitcoin, but with Bitcoin, I'm saving the energy that I received as a reward for my work into the future so that I can do anything that I want, right? And for me, that's building something, doing something, you know, it's not getting another pair of shoes, it's it's so not consuming it's it's i want to move towards building whatever build. it is a, a home a family a business you know it does that that doesn't matter like whatever you want to do right but contribute and do something in some way instead of just being a consumer and i think this is like one of the important points that we should maybe start talking about more right because eventually we should build together, like, better, right? I think, well, off mic, we talked about you were going to Croatia, Dubrovnik. You have the crazy, crazy castle, right? Like, yeah. name a modern-day castle or name a modern-day, you know, I, I think it was, uh, uh, it's Rodos in Greece, the island where they had, like, the man in the harbor, like, the crazy, right. like, I think it was that bronze or stone. I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. But just something like that, right? Just Absolutely. something to be Absolutely. proud of, like, something that, 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 is there low like time, 500 years later time. yes something exactly low time. Exactly. Yeah. exactly yeah and so i think that is what even talking about this it it fills me with some sort of joy or i don't know like uh, it, it's fantasizing about what you could do but i think eventually it will bring you more joy than another pair of shoes but Brad, let's, kind of the point. Let, let's talk just scientific because we're all already talking for a long time i don't know when you want to cut us off but let's just say something about i have enough one thing quantum effect of the things you know now we know that objects that are observed uh, versus the ones that are not observed you know they 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 function in a different way okay, we know that quantum physics so if you look to people like joe dispenza and other you know these uh, new age people they say that we create with our thoughts right yes so right now you have millions of bitcoiners that are very optimistic and we are creating the fucking best world the best money, the best sound money we want in our world. We're creating it as it goes on the fly. We're creating the fucking airplane as it flies. And every year there's a more beautiful surprise that comes. One year it was El Salvador, a country started buying Bitcoin. This year, right now, today, today and yesterday, we learned that the former president of the United States is going to attend a Bitcoin conference in Nashville. Donald Trump is going to go there and he made some promises about Bitcoin and, you know, self-custody and the crypto in general. So he's very favorable to that, even though I think crypto is shit. This is really good news for Bitcoin. So we're, it's not just dreaming. We're creating this fucking new world. And also what we need to understand is that we have way more that we need Bitcoin in reality, most, most of us. So this success buying power is going to give us, as you said, time to uh, take care uh, of our hobbies. And one of my hobbies is to do everything I can against war, to promote Bitcoin, stability, to help people, to plant forests, to build beautiful things, you know, to have fun, to listen to music, to make barbecues, to go to Bitcoin events. So that's what we're going to do, you know, because and as the year go on, we're going to get more and more powerful. And more and more people are going inside this system and more and more people are going to have a stake that they don't want to lose. And in Canada right now, there's maybe a block of 8 million voters in Canada that will not vote for any candidate that says that uh, crypto is going to, uh, you know, it's going to be bad because right now you have holders, you know, it's not only Bitcoin, it's all kinds of various stuff, but still, this is the new economy. And mm -hmm. the biggest co company in the history of Canada is Ethereum, okay, in valuation. So every uh, altcoin is a shitcoin because it's essentially just a company that's controlled by individuals that can print more and it can change the rules on the fly. So that's what Ethereum is. 
So uh, they can break the law or follow the law. They're just a company. But Bitcoin is the commodity. So that's why it's different. Bitcoin, nobody can decide anything and you cannot get infiltrated by, uh, you know, by, uh, by nefarious players. Yeah. I still have time so we can, we can okay. talk how, how long you want. Um, okay. Looking at what I wrote down to talk about, but there was one thing that really stood out, I think, in your X profile. Yeah. You state, seek internal divinity, find Bitcoin enlightenment. Exactly. Can you, that's what I, can you elaborate a bit on that? No, but that's exactly, you know, you comes a time where, you know, you understand that uh, you've been lied to. You understand that, uh, you know, things might uh, uh, be uh, not exactly as you were told. When you start looking for the truths and you start to meditate, you start to realign yourself, you start to, you know, to say no to fear, you start to, you know, to realign yourself. and and then you discover things. Then things start to pop up. Like, and Bitcoin is that for me. Bitcoin for me, I see it as a step in like an individual enlightenment almost, where you get to a point where now the universe decided that for you, money shouldn't be a thing anymore. You know, so we're gonna put time on your side, and we're gonna give you access to this technology if you're able to see it and to take, uh, you know, take a stake in it. So that's how I see it. I was. Uh, I was looking for it. I was looking for that peace, you know, that peace of mind that the Bitcoin gives. And yeah. that's what Bitcoin is. And I'm a, I'm a Bitcoin Christian as well. Shout out to my group, Bitcoin Christians. Shout out to my group, Vades Etiedan podcast. This is a Bitcoin community from former Yugoslavia. There's people in Slovenia and Belgrade in, uh, in Croatia. I do podcasts with them also. We have people now all over the world, man. And these people are dreamers. These are... God loving people. These are, you know, decent folks that believe in bond, uh, that believe in freedom over bondage. And that's why I don't even enter in any like political ideology case. Like I'm a liberal in the sense, as I told you, uh, individual freedoms, freedoms of religion, that. But I think that yeah. today it's not even who's a liberal or not. I think today it's to really who's for freedom and who's for bondage. And if you accept bondage by saying it's good for the planet and cow farts are really dangerous, well, you're still accepting bondage, you know? So it's a sad sight for you and for your successors. So yeah. I think it, but I'm very hopeful also, Bram, because, you know, the French Revolution, uh, the, the French resistance was 5% of the population. The American Revolution was 3% of the population, but a very determined percent. Okay, these people were very determined. So Bitcoiners, what are we? We're very determined and we're getting our way in many issues. We have, a, you know, we have Assange that was freed, a Bitcoiner, a Bitcoiner paid his plane to get back. And I'm sure that the Bitcoiners were the one that really cracked that nut, okay? Because the Bitcoin community was all for Assange. So we're starting to see also the influence we can exert. And I say to the people that are anti-government and everything, the government don't see it as a some kind of a clique. See it as levers of powers that get occupied by certain individual and certain gangs or certain you know parties or whatever. But Bitcoiners need to occupy those positions. I want a Bitcoiner on every position. You know, I want mayor Bitcoiners. I want prime minister Bitcoiners. I want cooks Bitcoiners. I want artists Bitcoiners. I want musician Bitcoiners. Shout out to uh, to musician Bitcoiners also. So. There's people like Roger making beautiful music. We were at, the, you know, in El Salvador there, he made a show and the love, the beauty of it all, you know, because now he's free as an artist. He can do whatever he wants. He can travel, he can make his music, make friends. You know, there's no fiat bullshit, man. Love that. When, when you said, I think you said something about time is on your side. Yeah. I have, I had to think about uh, this is a is a big sidestep, I think. But you know, I th I think the value of life comes from the the finiteness of the time, right? So you can say time is not not on your side because you don't know how long you have. But the other side of that is if you think time is on my side, I should make the most of it because I don't know how much I have, right? That those are two different ways of looking at life, right? But let's so let's say you appreciate life and you know that time is on my side because I don't know how much I have. 
But in a fiat money system, your time is stolen from you. So even though you made the mental decision to put time on your side and not against you, the tool that you use or are forced to use, you know, in many countries you're forced to use the money, you know, the currency where you where you live. It 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 steals the time that you deliberately spend on something you know, that makes you value your time. Are you still following? Well, I'm, I'm following. <laughs> yeah. And so once you adopt Bitcoin, you do not only consciously have time on your side, but also this tool that is Bitcoin enables you to actually have it on your side. To use it. Right. To be, yes. to be yes. your time, not yes. somebody else's time. Yes. Me, I'm, I'm very sad. You know for who I'm sad? For all the hardworking people stuck in the matrix that wake up at five in the morning, get stuck in the ta traffic and do shitty fire jobs with shitty bosses and they work hard physical jobs, got home exhausted and have all of this shit to deal with, with their kids that get sick and stuff like that because of all of the poisons and the way the society is set up. And they still get robbed at the end of the day. Even they did all of that sacrifice. Yes. And they did yes. it for the good reason. They did yes. it for their family. They did it yes. for a better life. And they still get fucked in the ass at the end because the system is rigged. The only way out is through Bitcoin. Okay. They get stolen their time that they do. They get robbed. It's theft. Yes. It's very simple. And we can call it fancy names, we can call it inflation, we can call it a bad economy, we can say it's because of Mr. Putin, we can say it's because of this and that, okay? But at the end of the day, there's people that are in charge of our economies to who we have given on our confidence that are breaking their oaths and their confidence to us, the citizens. And the time, the tipping point, uh, the tipping point will come where the people will say no more. And these people won't be Bitcoiners. These people will be the guy I'm just describing you to that can't, you know, that can't do it anymore. That, that's like this, that's in debt, that's, that can't do it anymore because the, it's yeah. exponential. Remember, as the people exit this rotten system, they have to print more to fill the holes. And what, what does that do? That just accelerates the demise of the system. But don't even be naive. The system is going down. That cannot be stopped. This ship now has sailed off. It has left the port and it's such a tall cargo ship that even the best people right now, um, I don't think they can stop it because it's exponential. Right now mm -hmm. we're in the dead zone, you know, we're in the, you can't like, what, what are they going to do? Who's going to come in and to stop everything to stay? Yeah. Oh, stop the economy, stop everything that has been yeah. done like yeah, this yeah. for the last 60 years. People are going to say, shut the fuck up, move away. You know, we're going to yes, pay somebody yes, yes. else. You know? I, I think uh, uh, an addition to this is that when we talk about this, we need to make it like very practical and rational, right? So we should not say, oh, you know, there's this evil elite or group no. or blah, blah, you know, what, whatever. You can think that, but that's not the point. The point here is there's a system and the people that work in a system work for the system to continue, right? And so we say we put people in charge. We, we did not do that, right? Uh, you know, they were name, there the, when we came. name the other people in the, in the Federal Reserve in America next to Jerome Powell. You have no, I don't know their names. I don't so, know. You know, so that, that, that is the point. The point exactly. is there's just people that work in an institution. They work for themselves. They have their own ego and family and wishes and desires and needs and wants and all these things. And they work according to a certain you know, set of rules or procedures or you know, mandates, whatever. But the entire system is designed to keep itself alive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and so also... don't, don't point at the people that Absolutely. are on the, no. on the seat. Point to the system and realize that you are part of a system that you don't know, uh, of which you don't know how it works. This was my realization. Oh, yeah. I'm, par I'm participating in a system that I don't know anything about. What the hell am I doing? Exactly. And they see That's you it. as, a, as a, you know, as a, almost as a, you know, as cattle, essentially. You know, they see you as a product. Like, you know, they, we're going to sell this to him. We're going to sell him debt. We're going to push this on them, you know, as a collective. And these people, what you need to understand, not only everything you said is true and I agree with, but also these people are so disconnected from the reality of the true people. 
Like these people, you need to understand, they, they have fucking butlers, you know, they have uh, villas, they don't live with it. They don't go buy Walmart food. They don't, you know, they don't do that stuff. So they don't care and know how the masses live. It's not one of their, they, there's no limit to their greed, okay? Seven, eight houses is not enough. It's never enough. So as citizens, we first of all need to understand that, as you say, these are just people. And these are just a bunch of rules that they pass, sometimes through lobbying, you know, all kinds of uh, shady practices that make, uh, that, that push something before something else. And we see that they're always ready to send money for war and they're never ready to give money for the things that really help the economy or that truly help the people. So, yeah, we need to reject all of that now. Now we're at the crossroads. All of this geopolitics, now we have people pushing us into third world war. We need to say, no, this is madness. To fight who? For what? Over what land? Man, we can explore the fucking space, you know? We have to fight over, over some fucking place in Bakhmut. Come on, man. This is a, this, now this, this has become like some, something that's totally disconnected from reality. And because this is their mindset, this is their view of the world, it's disconnected from reality. It's connected to some kind of a weird Disney, like you say, you know, bad guy, uh, good guy, bad guy. That, like, who cares if there's nuclear war and us, the plants, the animals, the, the children, everybody gets blown away or dies from a fucking nuclear winter. Like, who won? Who won? And what did he win? I'm... I'm, I'm... I don't understand that. No, me neither. I'm visualizing that in my head. Like then, someone is in a bunker, and 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 uh, you know, one side or the other, and they're gonna be like, "Oh, we got him good," you know. And then everyone is dead. Yeah, exactly. Everyone outside the but bunker see, is even dead. Them in the bunker, they're gonna be dead. They think it's good, you know, until yeah. scavengers like me, I'm gonna survive just to fuck them to go into their <laughs> fucking bank, uh, bunker and to eat their their, their yeah. canned soups. I'm gonna eat their fucking canned, canned soups, man. I think what is hard to two things still figuring out like what my way of thinking is, but I, I end up, uh, I think it's just really rational, but also like there, there's just, I end up so many times at like just a fork in the road. It's either this or it's that like, there's no, there's no in between. Right. But I think what we have to realize is that there, there's also a lot of people that are, that, that participate and work in the system to keep the system alive that think they are doing the right thing right like you hear people say like oh we need inflation because that stimulates consumption and that stimulates like entrepreneurship and etc 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 right and so you know i think that's nonsense but there's people that take that very seriously they have phd in their name you know whatever uh, and they think they are doing the right thing and and i so we should stop i think we should stop pointing at them Right, we sh we don't have to convince these people. We have to convince people that are like us that you know looked at the world, and and that's also you know why I re really want to focus on millennials. It's like we looked at the world in a certain way. We grew up in the best time to ever grow up. No problems, nothing, you know, unless you were unlucky like you to live in a place where war broke out. You know, like that is just. Mm -hmm. random mm -hmm. right that's ultra random but we grew up in the best time to ever grow up and we have no clue how this yeah paradigm around us this matrix whatever you want to call it right how that works and we have to stop thinking that everyone who's in charge has our best interest at heart right they don't. or that we are the good guys or that they are the bad exactly. guys whatever whoever exactly. you're pointing at right yeah. like like you said look inside yourself what do you want are you able to do these things do you have autonomy or did you outsource it right like do you can can do, can you have kids can you have a house can you spend time with your kids right can you work on yourself like what just these reflection questions and I understand while I'm saying this that there's a lot of people that don't even have time to reflect. Exactly. But exactly. that is my point. Exactly. But that's <laughs> that why the, the that hope is, that on is Bitcoin, I, I always say to people, buy for $10. Just buy a $10 worth of Bitcoin. Just open hmm. that crack. Just crack that nut. Put that $10 into Bitcoin. You can do it on a liquid network. You can do it on a lightning network now. Almost no fees. Just, buy, just open the possibility. Give yourself that hope that things are going to get better. 
and that finally you have found that way, that small magical door to which when you go in, you become, you're in fucking Narnia and you're the high king of Bitcoin. Okay. So do that, buy that $10, do it tomorrow if you haven't. And like, that's why we, we do what we do. That's why I lo love coming on to talk to you about Bitcoin. You know, that's, that's why we do it. We, we do it out of love. We do it because it helped us. And every time we talk about it, it makes us realize new things. And every time I listen to the podcast of your guests or other podcasts, I always have new thoughts and new ideas and some old thoughts can get modified and it's fine. And, but like, once you are in this quest for freedom, for, for God in my case, uh, and for sound money, well, then all the roads lead to paradise. Yeah. So if someone says to you, what is Bitcoin and why should I care? What is like your go-to reply? What, what's like the one sentence pitch? I tell them Bitcoin essentially is a ledger anchored on mathematics produced by energy. And it's the soundest money that nobody can devaluate and nobody can take from you if you don't give them your keys that you hold, if you hold it properly. So just think about the power of that. And I, I leave them with that initially, you know, and then people come back to me. I have some people, I, I orange pill, you know, uh, maybe two years ago, and then they, they, they write me, hey, yeah, Bitcoin is going up or it's going down, or whatever the price movement, you know. And then I explain to them that the fire price is not important. What's important is how many sats do you own, guys? Do you have some sats? Not enough. Start buying more, you know. And then uh, they buy, you know, for $100 and it starts from that. And I have a lot of people that are very grateful uh, for shout out to Slash Burp on uh, X that are orange pill. Uh, we grew up together, you know, and it's such a beautiful thing after you orange pill somebody that understands truly Bitcoin, you know, and then he he's shilling to another person, you know. And so it's it's, I don't know, it's just beautiful, you know, we're just spreading the good word you know <laughs> yeah yeah i i feel the same i sometimes i i've had i have said like it's it's it feels very altruistic like i'm not doing this for myself which is i think not totally fair because i i i want this to happen like i my understanding of what bitcoin is now is it, it is it's a world changing discovery and i need to tell other people about it exactly. and i want to see it succeed like i'm invested in it right and uh, i i love this like people are going to be like yeah that's why i say like it's a cult <laughs> you know please don't buy bitcoin you know <laughs> just to, to just to prove we're not a cult you know i think <laughs> i think that's funny you know this is the only cult in the world that tells you don't listen to me think for yourself right yeah. so uh you know it's it's you know, whatever it's it's it, it, it's not necessary to talk about that, but it's just yes, I think it's altruistic, but it's also you could I think again you could look at it from the negative side, like you know they talk about Bitcoin because they have Bitcoin, you know, like that's just just a nihilistic negative yeah. thought. Like you could yeah. also be like, okay, no, I'm talking about Bitcoin because I'm manifesting it together with you. Like yeah. I'm, we are manifesting the change together, right? Like yeah. where else do you think any change comes from? You know, so just comments like that, I find very negative and nihilistic, you know, but like, uh, yeah. Haters what what are else do you hate. expect? Haters are going to hate, of baby, course. but players are going to play and we're going to buy some more stat sats, you know, and we're going to keep choosing love and you shouldn't even get at all attached, Bram, uh, to what other people think or what other people say. If your actions and your words, listen. Every time we say something, we, ca we cast a spell, okay? It's called spelling for that. So you cast spells. So every spell you cast on yourself and others, make it as something positive, you know? And sometimes you're going to slip. Sometimes you're going to say some, you know, so I like sometimes to swear. But it's not out of malice. I just do it because, uh, you know, it feels good sometimes to, to, to stray. But uh, these people, they're sadly trapped in their own mind. And the worst bondage is the one we force upon ourselves, you know? And, once we become a victim of ourselves, there's there's no limit to the cruelty one can put on himself, you know, because yeah. he, he knows what takes him. You're inside, so you know how to hurt yourself. So, you know, these people are stuck with their own demons, but it doesn't matter. They can wake up one day. I have no enemies. 
have nobody. Uh, I'm, you know, because I love everybody. And if I had some, I crush them. So I have no one. So when you look at, you know, kind of like current geopolitical developments, I wanted to ask you, what are your ideas about like global game theory and Bitcoin adoption? Like, uh, yeah. of course, El Salvador adopted it. You know, uh, I, I, I think that's nice, but it's also, you know, they were down and out. It, this, this, this was like an experiment and it worked. But is there going to be like a real serious big enough country that's going to adopt this? Or like, how, how do you see this? What are your thoughts? I see it like this. Uh, we have some scholars, some Muslim scholars that have said that uh, Bitcoin is halal, so they can buy it as a monetary asset. It doesn't go against their faith. Okay? Uh, we see now the petrodollar has been ended. Uh, the Saudis don't want to continue the petrodollar. So, but what this means now is that the emperor has no clothes. The American dollar without the petrol behind it is worthless. Okay, It's uh, just a dead burden uh, pile of shit. So... The Arab countries are going to be the ones that are going to uh, be buying it. If they're not already, I've heard, I've heard some rumors that Qatar might be buying it in some funds and stuff like that. So I think it's going to start in the Gulf. Why? Because the Gulf have the access of Fiat, American Fiat, to buy it, to make the move, you know. And once a country like what Qatar goes public and says, we bought Bitcoin and it's uh, the money uh, works with our you know, banking system, the Islamic banking system, stuff like that. Then you're going to have a Kuwait, then you're going to have, you know, uh, the, the Emirates, you're going to have the Saudis, and these countries there are going to play and go there first because they have these American dollars at hand. The BRICS, they want to create their own money and they're going to fail because, you know, they're going to create another, uh, you know, uh, uh, Venezuela type thing that they created, but much, obviously much bigger, much, you know, these countries are more serious. But it's still going to be a shit coin and it's going to be a shit coin controlled by Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. So any businessman that's not, uh, even the businessmen from China and Russia don't want to participate in this economical scheme, you know. So uh, Bitcoin is going to be, it's just going to be gaining momentum every time, you know, the, the doubters are going to be sh shown to be, uh, to, 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 to be uh, wrong. And once this starts, well, once you have these four or five Arab countries that buy it, then it opens the, the complete Pandora box and you're going to have African countries jump, jumping in. And like I've been to sub-Saharan Africa a few times and the exchange, uh, the cellular credits as money. So a Bitcoin system there is going to lift their economy like uh, people can hardly imagine. I mean, Africa is huge. There's a lot of people. Everybody... Is grinding, everybody's doing small things, you know, pushing uh, uh, some jobs and some stuff like that. So Bitcoin there is really going to be able to, for the first time, include them in the world economy in an honest way. Not through, uh, you know, uh, uh, France and their fucking system of French, you know, African money that they use to, to convert them and to rob them. So... It's just a question of time. I see Bitcoin becoming a, a very mainstream from now in 10 years, maybe that it's going to be like something that the countries and, you know, the funds, uh, they buy day in, day out and they trade and it's just going to go to the decimals and more decimals and more decimals. Yeah. Yeah. My money is on an Arab country too. Yeah. I uh, got a lot of slack on Twitter when I, I, I researched the Mr. 100 entity. I don't know if you saw that. No, um, but I think uh, I think it could be Singapore, actually, or Bahrain. But um, yeah, I think it's an Arab country. Yeah. But well, we'll see. You know, just the 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 the, the prince of uh, Saudi Arabia, Salman. He's a gamer, and this guy is very tech savvy. I mean, he owns yachts and he goes to vacations in Europe. You know, and he knows what Bitcoin is, and he he decides he's want to make a ball move and have the. Saudi Arabia be a leader among their Arabic peers. This is such huge money that's going to enter the system that we can't even, you know, like Germany, what they're selling is chump change essentially for the money that these guys mm -hmm. can put in. Especially if they see that the, the Americans keep on printing like there's no tomorrow and that the petrol dollar is, is finished, you know, and that God forbids that Russia uh, uh, wins the war in Ukraine and that, you know, uh, maybe China invades uh, Taiwan and all of these uh, turbulences. Like, 
do you, do you really really want to own American debt? You know, if they're uh, in a in a conflict, open conflict with the BRIC nations, like so, it's I I don't know how it's gonna play out, and I'm very optimistic because I think that in these rotten systems, there are still people that have their head on their you know their shoulders, and that at the end of the day, have families and will say this is enough, you know. So I'm hopeful. But we yeah. don't know where it's going to start. It can start with a small thing. You know, sometimes revolutions start with somebody that uh, screams on another person because uh, they don't have anything to eat. And then it spirals out of control and the masses get get angry. But uh, we're seeing that in the Western world right now, people are suffering and people are being impoverished and people are are not getting what the fuck is going on and who is making these crazy decisions. So... Uh, let me predict right now, right here, that Mr. Trudeau is going to lose his next election. So less than a year from now, we're going to have uh, Pierre Polyev as the next prime minister of Canada. If you're some betting man, you can play some bets now. Yeah. And he likes Bitcoin. He likes Bitcoin. Yeah. But he's, he works for the same uh, forces, you know, in a way. It's the same industrial forces, you know, that it's just a different gang of friends. But. It's not the people his priority. Okay. Mm. So yeah. All right. Let's uh let's, let's wrap it up slowly. Three thank I have you. three qu three yes. questions. Three yes. questions. Do you think Bitcoin can influence policy making eventually? You know, as you mentioned, you, you had you, you said like I want Bitcoiners everywhere. I think they are already everywhere because this is an individual mind virus and revolution in that sense. Do you, yeah, so do you think this can influence eventual policies or are we seeing that already? Oh, yeah, we're seeing that already. And I mean, there's there's a lot of hidden Bitcoiners also in many powerful positions. People that are in the, you know, in the security apparatus that are in the military that are, you know, it's not just Jason Lowry that stole the Max Kaiser's idea that he's a Bitcoiner, but uh, there's many more. You know, there's many. It basically is, uh, the question is, are you lucid? Are you lucid? Do you see? The conjecture as it is, if you are, you're a Bitcoiner. Because if, what, are, what else is there for us, you know? So, yes, I think there's a lot more. Yeah. And what's the most important thing to continue and accelerate Bitcoin adoption, you think? Well, I think that we need to have more fun with it, you know? I would, I would go more on a, like, a, I don't know, some games where you can win Bitcoins, you know, some kind of a pop culture stuff, but with Bitcoins, you know, and at the same time, you slowly like educate people on Bitcoin, but not to have it this, uh, you know, we're, we're very geeky. Uh, our approach is very geeky. We like long talks and deep ideas, but not everybody's for that, but they still deserve to le learn about Bitcoin, you know? So I think we, we, we need more fun content for, for no coiners that we're going to attract, you know, into this, uh, and to help them discover it for themselves. Love that. That's a good point. I love. Uh, do you know the little hodler? No. Do you know these oh, books? Oh yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes. I, I know the. I For saw, kids. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love it. It's so really cute. fun. Yeah. So yeah, cute. it's really fun. We yeah. need more stuff that. like that, you know. For, yeah. Uh, for the because we need to educate. That's what we do now. We have the burden. This burden has been put on us. You know, this privilege, this blessing has been put on us. So are, are we gonna be just some egocentric maniacs and go live in the isolated islands, get richer every year? Or are we going to share this knowledge with our fellow man? You know? Yes. That's hence why we're talking <laughs> yeah, here, exactly. of course. All right. To wrap it up, the yeah. question I ask everyone at the end, what is a core belief you will never let go? That we praise and God provides. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for this awesome conversation. Really nice to finally meet from uh, from Twitter to here. And uh, yeah, man, appreciate your time. Appreciate your thoughts. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to your listeners. And it was a real privilege. And shout out to South Slav groups, also another group of Bitcoiners. Love you all. Love everybody on X. And sorry for the shit posting. <laughs> Love it. Thanks, man. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, check out some of my other episodes to learn why Bitcoin is the most important subject you must understand and adopt. If you want, you can follow and connect with me on Twitter X. I'm at Bram K. That's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you have any feedback or questions, just reach out. I read and reply to every single message. 
I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for our next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye. 